Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a backup from your personal computer or any computer to another computer that we call it a server. So in case that your computer fails, so still you can have a backup of your important data. As you can see in the middle, it says 22 because we can do this transfer of data from any part of the world between two computers by a secure tunnel or they call it secure shell and SSH is coming from there. So to do this, there are programs that are available uh, for Windows and most of the time you have to pay a lot of money to do that. So we can do this for free and there are packages available written in Linux that can use one of those packages is called rsync. It's doing this for us, but to run or Linux package on Windows, what we need is Sigwin. So first of all, we need to download this program, Sigwin. And if you Google Sigwin, you go to the website and you find the relevant, uh, is it 64 available? You can download this. And what you get is this package, setup x86. We open it and ask us, do you want to allow this? Yes. What we see here is we continue installation as default. So we click next, next, uh, C drive is fine. Next, local package directory is fine and download. And we continue with the system proxy. We should have internet connection because it's downloading from the internet from these one of these sites. Any of them is fine. I click randomly this guy and click next and it's going to get a full list. For example, this one, it says it's older one because I already installed this. I continue proceed anyway. Here we have our Sigwin program that we need to install some packages. One of the packages that we need is called SSH or our secure shell. We don't see anything here. We click category, we go to all and we click net. And here we go, open SSH. And we click on this arrow and we choose the latest version. I already have this 8.4. And if you click on this, you leave it like this. And the next package, there are three packages. The first one is SSH. The second one is called rsync. And this package is also located in the net rsync clicking on this arrow and we click on the latest version. And for text editor, since we may need to type things, it would be handy in the future. You may not use it at all, but it's going. To, it's good to have it. So we click Vim and latest version. We click next and you should be able to see a list of packages here and we simply click next. But since I already have those, I don't, but when you click next, I will go and download and install those packages. Uh, those are Linux packages and they give you the ability to run Linux programs on Windows. This is Windows 10, but I think it should be very similar, similar way for installation and the rest of the setup. Okay. So after this, you will see uh, this icon on your uh, Windows. The other thing we need to do is opening our computer port. There are like pathways from our computer to the, to the world. And these are called ports and we need to open these or create new one. So click here, the windows and I click firewall with advanced security. We get this window. We should get this window. If you don't go to the advanced menu option, you should be able to see this. And we go click inbound rules and we want to create a new rule to create a new port for us. In the first part, I click port, click next and TCP. We selected, uh, keep it on TCP on a specific local port. This SSH secure shell the default port number is 22. So we keep it 22 for now. And we click next, allow connections. Yes, next. 
and I call it, for example, my SSH port, and we finish. Here we go. So if I click here, properties, I'll see that my port is available. It's the icon is green and local port is 22. So now our port is available on Windows. Next, we are going to open our Sigmin program by right clicking and clicking run as administrator. Ask us for allow, yes. And we should be able to see our uh, Sigmin program like this. The first part is my Windows username and the second at sign desktop is my computer. So how to connect to a second computer? So each, each computer on the internet is being recognized by an IP address. For example, if, I, if somebody else wants to connect to my computer, I have an IP address. So to get this number, I click IP config and here we go. And on the IPv4 is the address that I can connect to my computer. Okay, the next part is configuring if my computer is connected to the other computer. For example, the server or the other computer I just want to transfer my data to. To make sure the connection is uh, stable, I click, I type SSH, the username for the Windows, which is called user at sign and the IP address. And I click enter and nothing happened. And the reason is the other computer has not been set up for the server yet. So we need to set up the server. In order to set up the server for the first time, what we do in our Sigmin window, we type in SSH post config. And after showing us several info, I will ask us our right existing. Since I already did that, I say yes. And it says creating default uh, SSH config file. And I say yes. And it says should strict mode be used? Yes. So all these you select as yes. And at the end, it says SSH service is already installed, host configuration finished, have fun. So when it's done, to make sure that the server is running, you type in net space start sig sshd. And the service is starting, now was started successfully. So you should be able to see this. Now with this running means that if somebody else uses my username and my IP address, if they know my password for this computer, they can connect to this, which is great. So I will do the same setup. I go to the other room that I have the other computer and I would repeat the same procedure that I did. So I installed the Sigmin, I go and click on the SSH host config and both of them, I'm going to run them simultaneously as servers. So I can send files back and forth. Next, we are going to test if our connection is uh, working. So our basically tunnel uh, or SSH. Uh, so what we do, we just type in SSH, the username of the computer is called user and the IP address of that computer. Okay, when I click on this, it will ask me these, do you recognize the authenticity of the host? Means that the other computer. And so each computer has a, a secure code. And since I'm doing this for the first time, it will ask me, do you recognize this computer that I'm connecting to? And since I know this computer, I say yes. So the other computer remembers me the next time that I'm going to connect to this and uh, it's not going to ask me this question again. So uh, I need to type in the password for the other computer. Here you go. We are connected to the user at tower-8020. Uh, so now in this mode, I can see where are we. For example, I can go to the 
and I am able to access to the data on this computer. Okay, so since we are connected to the, the other computer in the other room, I want to disconnect. So I simply uh, type in exit. And you see connection to this IP address is being closed and I'm back into the command prompt of my own computer to see if we can connect uh, to this computer on the other room again. So I click up, it has it in the memory, SSH, user, name, at sign, the IP address. I click enter and this time it only asks me for the password, which is great. Here we go. So we are connected to that computer without asking questions but still it asked for the password. So every time you're connecting to the other computer, you have to type in the password. So there's a solution for this, and this is called SSH key-based authentication. And what we need is that we need a key and we need a lock. And we are going to keep the key in this computer, which is my name, Amir. And we are going to send the lock to the tower computer. To do this, I come back to the Emir computer. So I want to, uh, tower computer remembers Emir. So next time it doesn't ask me for this authentication. What I do, I generate a key for myself, SSH key gen. So it generates a key and it says uh, generating public and private key and enter file in which to save the key this is the file name, we keep it the same. And the passphrase, we don't, so for now we don't need a passphrase, but you can have a passphrase if you remember it. I, for now, I just uh, skip this. This passport is required if you're accessing this, your key. Every time you want to open this key, you need to put this passport. So I enter nothing here. And here we go, we have two keys. One of them is private, one of them is public. Basically, private key is like a key and public key is like a lock. And we are going to send this public key to the other computer. So every time I'm connecting to the tower computer, the public key recognizes my private key because they are kind of like a family. And the computer doesn't ask for a password. Okay, to send the public key to the tower the computer. What I need to require to do is typing SSH copy ID. And I am going to use the name of the other computer user at, and I click enter is going to copy the uh, the public key, which is available, it, it can be, you can put it outside so everybody can see it, that's okay. Uh, it's like a lock and it requires the password for the other computer, the tower one. And here you go, number one, one key is added. So let's go and see if we can connect to the other computer. So what I do, I copied that text, and we are connected without even uh, giving a password. So I will do it again, exit and SSH. Here you go. We are connected to that computer. Now the whole purpose of this video is trying to copy some data from one computer to another computer. And this process is being done by the package is called rsync and the format of this uh, function is that you type in R -S -R rsync and these are the arguments that they give you more information. We, you can talk about it. You can, these are optional and space. Uh, and here you type in the location of the data from the computer, the source computer. So this is the Amir computer. And notice that uh, in order to, to make sure everything is reserved, I put it in the quotation marks. So I type in slash sig drive slash C, which is drive C, doesn't recognize C by itself, it needs a sig drive. And this is the folders, the crystal files that I have here. And they are located on my 
C drive. There are so many beautiful crystals that, that they have data uh, that I want to transfer this uh, crystallography data to the other computer, which is I put a space. This is a destination path. And the other computer name is the username of the Windows at sign, the IP address. And Colin slash sick drive slash drive C. So I'm going to copy this crystal files into the C drive of the tower computer, the other computer. And I click enter. And it does it very quickly because uh, right now I'm at the university and the connections are uh, very high speed. And you see that uh, around, uh, it didn't take a second to, to copy all of these data. And this is how we do it. So in the next video, I'm going to explain how to do this process, the rsync automatically, or if you want to back up uh, a certain folder in the C drive or D drive at night, you need a program and it does it automatically, for example, at night at a certain time.